We got to talking about mothers, fathers, children, and a question came up about circumcised. And the question is, circumcised. Fathers, do you agree with getting your son circumcised or is no circumcised just pretty much the option? And mothers, weigh in also. I want you guys to call in and share your opinion about that. But also on the second half of the show, we're going to talk about ladies' intimacy or sex with a man that's circumcised or not circumcised. Is there a difference? Or as one young lady told me earlier today, uh, it's just too much bacteria problem. It's just nasty. So uh, give us a call in 214-454-0929 and we'll be talking in just a minute. I never hit the game winning shot, but I'll always be there when it counts. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Here at Legacy Orthopedics, all of our care is centered around you. We're here for your joint pain and athletic injuries. Experience, training, and patient relationships are at the foundation of Legacy Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Uh, we pride ourselves on the patient experience. Uh, we treat every single patient as if they were our family. Welcome back to A Man's Point and View. I'm your host, Mike Mike. And we took the commercial break and we, you know, it was kind of laid the foundation regarding today's show. But again, today's show is circumcised or no circumcised. And I'm targeting this subject to the guys. So all you guys out there who's watching live now, and I know my boy Hollywood is watching, so you know I'm counting on you to call in Hollywood. And Mr. Eric calling out of Georgia, I know you're there. Hey, we all are fathers. And, you know, we was talking the other day, Destiny and I and a couple other people, and, you know, the subject come up about circumcised. You know, and my point of view is circumcised is somewhat all over the place. You know, of course, coming from the baby boomer generation, uh, not many babies back in the older days were circumcised. However, fast forward to nowadays, uh, I think the last research and study that I saw, I think it says something like, close to 80% of all babies born in the past 10 years was circumcised. However, I was talking to a young lady today, and I hope that you're watching, so call in. Uh, also, Miss Young Lady, she brought out a very interesting point, uh, and I think she's right under the baby boomer age group, how that it's a no-brainer. Every baby gets circumcised. And I told her, I said, hey, you know, uh, there's a lot of people I've spoken to in the medical industry as well as parents that said, nah, I will not have my child circumcised. And then the other said automatically, yeah, it's a no-brainer because of the bacteria possibilities. But now, interesting enough, what I did not know and I learned during the preparation of the show is uh, while the baby is in the womb, the excess skin around the area is a protection internally so that the baby does not get an infection. Now, if anybody in the medical industry uh, is watching and want to correct me, I welcome the call in. But the great thing about it is, uh, uh, talking from a biblical perspective, it was put there for a reason. 
So the question is, it's there, so now why are you taking away, you know? So that's just my point and view regarding that particular subject. But the main thing I wanted to do was open up the dialogue. Uh, during this time, we are all around the house. We have, uh, you know, different things. And those new couples, because, you know, with this COVID, there's going to be a whole lot of babies born starting the month of December. Uh, because what the COVID started about March, tack on, you know, what is it, nine months, 10 months. Yeah, it's going to put us right around December, January, and a ton of new babies are going to be born. So uh, you saw the number on the screen, 214-454-0929. Call in, share your point and views. Don't have to match mine, doesn't have to matter. But, hey, it's a possibility you get a chance to get on the air. But you think about fathers come December, January, February, uh, for you fathers, especially you first-time fathers. You got your new baby boy. He comes into the world. You're going to sign the birth certificate. Then the doctor going to say, parents, do you want your child circumcised? At that point, as a father, you got to make a decision. You know, do you snip, snip, you know, and boom, your son is circumcised? Or do you maintain what he came into the world with? And with that, uh, why do you make such a decision? Why would you say yes or no? I would welcome to hear the opportunity. Got a caller calling in. Welcome to a man's point of view. Uh, this is Mike. Mike, who am I talking to? Uh, Scott Abels. Hey, Scott Abel, where you calling from? I'm calling from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. How's the weather there? I know it's hot here. <laughs> uh, it's hot here. It's a little cooler than it has been, but... Um... It's still pretty hot. It's upper 90s. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, you've been watching the show, and we have a topic today about circumcise. Circumcise or no circumcise, and we was talking about fathers and their point of views. What's your viewpoint about circumcise our boys? Well, first of all, I have a son who is 18 now, and we had him circumcised when he was about a month old. And I don't think now... I would um, do that. Interesting. I think that would be a choice that I would leave up to him uh, if he got older. Really? What makes you change your mind? Well, because, like you said, there is a reason for it. You know, it, it uh, protects the penis in the, in the womb to keep it from getting infected. And I... Uh, I don't know. I just, it's like one of those things like um, they used to give women hysterectomies as soon as they started having uh, any kind of a female when they were over the age of 30. Hmm. You know, it's just, just because it's always been done does not mean it needs to be done. Right. I agree with that. That's a very good point right there. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your call in and uh, keep listening because I got another subject I'm going to bring up later about circumcising. You may have a point of view about that one also. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. That was a very interesting point, and I had another caller come in, so I hope they call back. Call if you're watching and call back. Uh, I didn't want to cut off uh, Mr. Scott there. But that's very interesting because you think about uh, back in the days, as we said, uh, it was an automatic. Now, and it's a good, good uh, comparison, he said, the hysterectomy, now there's a whole different medical reason why people are not doing certain things again nowadays versus back when we was growing up. And I say we, those that was in the uh, early 60s, mid 60s, and late 60s that was born, we was pretty much done. We, you know, us guys was done a certain way. Uh, some unquestionably got circumcised, some did not. Some had medical reasons. Others had religious reasons, and some just didn't know any difference. So I like like uh, what Scott just said. Uh, maybe that's a decision the boys should make on their own as they get older. Now, the flip side to it is uh, that sounds like a whole lot of pain once you get older, too. Uh, but that's another subject within itself. Uh, and I think my caller left a message here. Uh, and as y'all can see, I'm, I'm working out the technology, but DFTV Network, we're constantly advancing. Okay, uh, uh, ladies, let's hear from you also. Let's hear 
what's your point in view as a single mom if you had a son? What decision would you make regarding getting your son circumcised or not? Uh, give us a call in. I know I was talking to a lady the other day and at the infancy of the conversation, she said, uh, absolutely, it's no question asked. If I had a child, it would be done. Then I raised a question up about, well, if the purpose of it inside is protection. Uh, but oh, I got another call. Hold on one second. Uh, a man's point of view. This is Mike. Mike, who am I talking with? This is Sharon Christian. Hey, Sharon. How are you doing today? Great, sir. How are you? Oh, fairly well. I'm doing this controversial conversation. Have you been listening to the show? We had a guy call in uh, talking about the uh, circumcision. And I just asked about a lady calling in. Uh, if you had a son, would you or would you not consider the factor of circumcised? Well, I do have a son who's 28, and I did have him circumcised um, the day after I had him. Really? What made you make that decision? I think it's very important um, to get it done early on. I think I heard you say that leave it up to the, the gentleman to have it done when they old enough. That's yeah, the other I'm caller saying. said that, yes. Um, I think, you know, for health reasons, it's important to get it done um, early on, they're not going to really feel the pain when they're an infant. You know, if they do, it's not going to last long and they're not going to remember it. But it's more of a health reason to me to get it done um, when they're younger. Now, my question, and if I'm stepping out of my lane, please correct me. At that time, uh, did your husband have a voice? What did he object it, go along with it? What was his point of view regarding the circumcision at the birth of the child? He was in agreement with me. Once I broke it down to him, that is more so um, a health hazard to not have it done than it is, then he was on board with me to get it done um, as soon as possible. Wow, excellent. I really appreciate that. Well, keep listening in because the second half of the show is going to be catered toward the ladies about the similar topic. So I appreciate you calling in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. We had uh, two different perspectives, a mother's perspective and a father's perspective. Interesting enough, both said about the health, but what I like about what uh, the mother did, Sharon said, was um, uh, with the health about infection. And later on, I want the show to go on because now I'm about to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, I want to cater the conversation uh, to guys and ladies uh, who are dating or married uh, is there a difference uh, with intimacy with a non-circumcised versus a circumcised? And you ladies who are out there, what about the sensitivity of yourself? Uh, have you noticed your non-circumcised mate, you guys have physical difficulties as time went along? You're watching A Man's Point and View with me, Mike Mike. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, let's talk about that. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Here at Legacy Orthopedics, all of our care is centered around you. We're here for your joint pain and athletic injuries. Experience, training, and patient relationships are at the foundation of Legacy Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Uh, we pride ourselves on the patient experience. Uh, we treat every single patient as if they were our family. Up, no, up, up. go down. No, down, down, down. Ooh, I want to watch the one where the guy says, Stella. Hey, Stella. I wish I could search for it like that. With this, you can. Stop scrolling and just tell the remote. Here's looking at you, kid. Wow. wow. That was cool. cool. I'll get you, my pretty. And your little dog, too. 
Whoa! Word. That's awesome! The new Dish Voice Remote. Stop scrolling. Just say what you want, and it's on. Dish, tuned into you. Welcome back to A Man's Point and View. I'm your host, Mike Mike. Uh, we had a pretty good conversation regarding circumcised as it comes to our boys at birth. Now, let's talk adult talk. Let's talk about us as men and you ladies and specific ladies. Uh, is there a difference? Uh, I'm not trying to get you to share your dirty laundry, but if you had intimacy with a man or would you have interest in, in, intimacy with a man who's not circumcised? And secondly, is there a difference? And for those callers, Sharon, if you're still watching, weigh in on that if it's not too personal. Also, guys, uh, in your situation, I've also uh, wanted to say for those guys who are circumcised and non-circumcised, is there a difference? I know I had a uh, medical thing I was talking to the day, uh, I think that was in the medical district, medical center district, and I brought the question up about it. And one of the uh, nurses said, well, she feel her personal opinion, she didn't have real life experience, that um, she feel a non-circumcised man will have more sensitivity than one without. So my question I raised was, okay, let's look at this from both angles. If he has excessive skin around there, then yeah, okay, maybe that movement would do it. But the one that has no skin, all the nerves are exposed. So how is that? So uh, we laughed about it. Interesting enough, I never got her answer because she turned pink and started laughing. So um, that was a very interesting point. But uh, I want to hear from you callers. Call in 214-454-0929. I know there were several of you guys on Facebook where I'm broadcasting as well as here on DFTV Network. And I have a caller. Hold on one second. A man's point of view. This is Mike. Mike, who am I talking to? Hey, what's up, Mike? It's Hollywood. What's going on, Mr. Hollywood? Man, I ain't heard from you since the last time we talked. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How's everything going? That is, that's one hundred percent true. Oh man, hey, trying to stay uh, covered free in the whole nine yards. You know how it is. Absolutely, but being born, stuck in the house with COVID, you know, you probably had some situationships that's going to be like next week's show. But uh, we'll get to that next week. Hey, you've been listening to the show about circumcised. What's your opinion about? circumcised and no circumcised and then uh let's start with that well you know what man to be honest with you man, i've had you know some various uh, opinions about this throughout the years i've i've talked to men talked to women about the issue of circumcision the effects of it but personally myself it's kind of like a kiss twin too you know and my mom and dad decided to circumcise me of course as a baby and i think it's benefited me on both ends so i think it's a it's a help um perspective as well and then there's a faith based religious perspective you know within what the church says about criticism and i think what it personally comes down to is the personal decision between you and your mate or you and the baby mama whoever may be to make the best decision for that child for the future because we know on the health side it could be beneficial you know on the other side of things as you get older uh, I, I heard the call earlier say that you should give that that, that uh, young guy a opportunity to make the decision for himself Personally, I don't think so. And as you get older, <laughs> and I don't have uh, uh, boys by chance, but I've had three daughters and raised three girls, but I know other men and, and women who have had sons that have had issues about this particular subject. You know, it becomes self-esteem issues. It can relate to health issues later down the road. If you're not circumcised, uh, some men have issues performing. So it's a catch-22 to a lot of the situation that we're talking about half the time. And I think that to the fact that, you know, you really got to, you really got to think that thing through when you are talking about having a child and uh, going through the circumcision part of things as well. So it kind of, it kind of boils down to that, man. Personally, I would do it myself if I was to have a son and the right today as well, uh, because of the, the future benefits and things like that. Right, right, right. You know, the interesting thing about it is uh, that hidden pretty close to me because in October, you know, I'm expecting a son. Uh, and that's a decision I'm going to have to make, uh, right, right. you know, whether to or not. And with my family history, my family beliefs and whatever, I grew up with the mentality of you don't do it. However, as I've right. gotten older, both the medical as well as the personal side of it, uh, 
flip side to it, no man in my family, uh, to my knowledge, has ever gotten circumcised, but no man in my family has never ever had a problem with it either for his bacteria or disease or whatever. Uh, but that's that generation. So that's an interesting way to look at it. I, I like the, your point regarding that. I guess my final question before I get you off the phone, as it relates to, say, relationships, have you ever heard any ladies make comment regarding maybe their man who's not circumcised? Man, I've had many. <laughs> and of course, you know, I've done radio shows throughout the years in the right? past. And talking about relationship talk shows, the one thing you discuss is when you start talking about real talk, which is about sex and relationships and sex. Right. And I, I've, had, I've had this discussion with many women outside the radio show as well, where women would come and say, you know, I started dating this guy, and we got to a point with empathy and, you know, being sexual in a relationship, and I discovered this guy wasn't circumcised. And it became an issue with her from a mental and psychological standpoint because wow. she never experienced that. And she said at the time that it was almost like a turnoff to her to the fact that this guy wasn't circumcised. And of course, she was comparing that to other guys that she dated, you know, and to the fact the way the skin looked or the smell of it. Uh, because when you're not circumcised, you have a lot of extra skin there. And sometimes if you're not a person, a highly, highly hygiene person, to stay clean at all the times, and they make sure you take care of it. So they could be an issue from a health perspective. But women look at it a little bit different, especially when it comes to a man performing. And just the whole gamut of thinking, man, it's, it's a psychological barrier to some women. So I've had many women to complain about that. Very on interesting. The script, you know, on the flip script of that, there are some women who say, well, it seems like a man, he may be larger per se, you know, because the skin <laughs> is still there to, you know, make it seem like it's larger by chance. So it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic to the fact that <laughs> some, most of the women that I've had the opportunity to talk about, they have pretty much complained about it, you know, due to the fact of the dynamics of the skin layer or it can be infected or it can be somewhat uh, hot smell to it, per se. You know, I've heard all those thoughts to that. So, yeah, man, I, I think it would be a really big issue for a man who hasn't been circumcised when it comes to sexual relationships with their particular partner. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting topic. There. That could be a round here discussion for a couple hours. Right, right, right. It's, uh, but I know me and you have done a whole bunch of interesting shows over the years. And and uh, I thought about it when I brought this up. A few people are like, well, why would you talk about that? But if you think about with this COVID, uh, there's a lot of people doing a whole bunch. And let's just call it what it is. They're having a whole bunch of sex because they're stuck in the house. And for those right, who right. are able to have children, you think about come December, January, there's going to be a ton of little boys born. Hold on, stay on the phone. I got another caller calling in. Hold on one second, okay? Gotcha. Uh, a man's uh, point of view. This is Mike. Who am I talking to? Hello? Hello? Yes, it's a man's point of view. Who's this? This is China. Hey, China. <laughs> hey, China, how's it going? Mute your TV in the background. <laughs> Say that again. I said mute your TV in the background. So you've been listening okay. to the show. What's your point of view about the topic today, Miss China? Hello. Okay, Hollywood. Yes, sir. Yeah, that caller to come through. But yeah, I appreciate that, man. I'm gonna get to this next caller, but tune in if you something else popping in your head, uh Give me a call back, but we got to do another show, me and you, because we can really break down some good hot topics. So we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> we definitely will. All right, sir. Will. Appreciate you. All right. Great show. Great show. Thanks. All right. And uh, Miss China, if you're watching, give me a call back. I think we had a connection issue there. But Hollywood brought up some very interesting points that uh, I want to repeat and re elaborate on and produce. How much time I got left? I have four minutes before the show. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, that wasn't by fast. Uh, you know, I think when it comes down to our beliefs and what, oh, hold on one second. A man's point of view, this is Mike. Well, Mike, Mike, how are you today? This is China. Uh, comedian China, uh-oh. Uh, you know, when I saw that popped up, I said, uh-oh. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing just fine, my brother, and just excited about the conversation that you decided to have today and couldn't <laughs> help but try to jump up in here. <laughs> well, you know what? I have three minutes left on the show. 
I'm going to be quiet and let you do what you do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is comedian China, a China dog, correct? That is correct, my brother. I just want to give a slight little different taste on what you're talking about up in here. Okay. What a great debate <laughs> to take on, the cone or the mushroom dome. <laughs> now, you know, let me see. The cone can sometimes be extra long, <laughs> but it can have a lot of lit going on. A few women say no matter how they clean that thing, that lint seems to come back no matter what it is they do. Nothing seems to change. <laughs> oh, but then some women say they don't like that mushroom too because they say the head on that thing be too fat for them to deal with, boo. <laughs> now, I say this. When it comes to both, if they both not clean, don't, no woman want to deal with that type of machine. Oh, right. So as long as that man is cleaning his thing, whether it be the comb or the mushroom dome, then we can get it going on. <laughs> but if he ain't keeping that thing clean, then we may have to change that man and send him out to another thing. Right. So you know what I mean? I, 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 you know what, real talk? I think I really do know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's my point of view. Whatever you like, do you. You know what I mean? And when it comes to the birth, and uh, the parents making a decision on who's, you know, whether they're going to snip, snip or not. They need to take consideration of what the male parent in that situation went through themselves. Right, you know, right. I can appreciate the mother with her stance and what she was told to do and all that. But it's that man, and I understand that's a, a sensitive thing down there, you know. So you might want to check with him first before you talk about snip, snipping your son. And not giving him an opportunity to tell you how he felt about right, it. Right, right, especially when you get 18 years old. That's a whole lot of pain. I, I have never experienced you know an 18-year-old. <laughs> I'm thinking that's, you know, that's a little bit much. So I would I would agree that it needs to be done when they, go, when they are young and right after birth, if that's what you're going to do. But if that's what you're not going to do, and you're going to allow them to continue to keep their extra meat, as we should say, <laughs> then it's up to you, that mother, to make sure that you keep it clean until they can. Right, right. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot, but I know me and you both like impromptu conversation. We're about to close the show out, so give the ladies out there who's um, about to experience their first mushroom or corn, what advice would you give them? <laughs> hmm. Well, now, you know, later I've been around the block a few times, and I had seen both. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I'm going to say again, as long as that thing is clean, this, this is one machine I can deal with, but it's not, <laughs> I can't deal with you at all. You know, now, my preference, my preference mm. is the mushroom. It's the mushroom. But I like mushroom. You feel what I'm saying? So when I see that kind, I feel familiarized with it. <laughs> when I eat ice cream, I eat it out the bowl, not the cone. So that cone is a little strange to me. Kind of like a hot box sometimes. I don't know. I'm just saying. That's just me. All right. Well, you know, I think there's words of wisdom, ma'am. I truly appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss China Doll. Look her up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Tube, YouTube, or whatever else they got out there. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Well, Miss China Doll, I appreciate you calling in, and thank you for listening to the show. We appreciate you, Mike. Mike, keep bringing us some, some serious topics that you do. Be blessed, my brother. All right, ma'am. Take care now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think my producer's waving at me now, so I think my 30 minutes is up. But in closing and conclusion, uh, as they say, mushroom or corn or whatever, I really don't know how the corn works, but I'm just leave that alone for now. Uh, switching the subject from a family perspective, when it comes down to a man's point of view is exactly what that is. But guys, for those of you who are in a relationship, always remember you have your point of views and so does she. Always make a decision that's the best interest for all three. I appreciate you watching A Man's Point of View. Next week, we're going to talk about situationship. COVID-19 got a whole bunch of guys stuck in situations with some ladies. Let's talk about it. What situationship are you in since COVID has kicked off that you want to share live on the show next week, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time? Until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next week. You've been into an automobile accident. I'm sure you're worried about medical bills, lost wages, and getting real compensation for your pain and suffering. But relax, I got you. 
I'm attorney Roderick White, and I've been fighting insurance companies since 2002. It's what I do, it's all I do. Never settle for less. Call us at 214 or 817, I got you. That's 214 or 817, 446-8968.